Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 6, Pattern Matching. So what's pattern matching? More or less um, an if-else block or a switch case uh, block on steroids if you want. It uh, allows you to react to certain cases and you don't have to write uh, all of this other syntax uh, sugar around it to make sure that um, you react correctly. And this makes it easier to read. And um, depending on uh, the compiler implementation, you can guarantee that all of your enum variants are exhaustively um, checked for. And uh, a, a common use within Rust is also unpacking optional values. So something that uh, has the option wrapper is then uh, easier to unpack and use. <clears throat> Python actually has that feature planned uh, for version 3.10 and uh, there is a git branch available where you can test it. Uh, feel free to read uh, PEP622 uh, structural pattern matching for the details of uh, what's going to be in there and how it will be used. Um, Rust has that uh, from the start. Let's go into the code and um, see how this uh, works. So right here we can see basic code that's not very new to the Python programmer. We have uh, classes that are for cats and for dogs. The dog has a property name. The cat has an age. We build the same in Rust. So we don't have classes. We have uh, structs that can have uh, properties. So there we go. We have the name that's of type string for our struct dog and the mapping to the Python code would then also be the struct cat has an age. In order to pass the two different uh, types to one function as we can do in Python just uh, like that, we have to wrap this into an enum. So we can enumerate uh, something that's called dog that has an argument of type dog and an enum called cat that has an argument that is of type cat. Then we define our uh, function below. And here's the new stuff for Python 3.10. There's this uh, match statement, then uh, the expression you want to match for. So in this case, it's uh, the pet, the animal. And um, we do the same in Rust. And our argument animal gets matched here. Difference as uh, a code for code blocks is the same as always. We have the curly brace and we have the colon to denote what's going to happen. We do not have to write the case in Rust. You just put the pattern that you want to match against. In Python, you will have, at least with the current proposal, to use the word case. Then uh, you put your pattern that you're matching against and uh, the colon. If then uh, is then the code block where you can put your handling of this case. <clears throat> In Rust, what's happening here is I have to qualify that I'm talking about the enum animals, the enum variant dog, and the D represents our dog. So here then in uh, the print line, I can access the D, which is an instance of a dog and uh, get the property name. Same happens for the cat below. And uh, we put out the same sentences as the Python code. Below, there is uh, another example that would be harder to read if this was all if else uh, statements. We get a number in and then we uh, treat the numbers. And for the case of the number one, we just uh, print the number one. Here we have a case that is two or this is pattern matching, so this is not a binary combination. The syntax for that is the same in Rust. Then we put correctly that this is a 2 or a 3. And uh, the next case would then be if x is uh, bigger or equal than 4. And this also works here. But here in Rust we can use ranges. So we use the range 4 up until uh, I32 max, but you can of course put, uh, I don't know, 10 
and uh, only treated up to 10. And then at the very end, we have this single underscore on both cases, and this denotes every other case. So if you cannot exhaustively test for every variant possible, because for numbers, for example, this may not be possible, then you can uh, use a default branch as exists, for example, in the switch uh, case statement blocks. Below we call this code, so we have our number that's called for the range uh, 0 to 6. So we should uh, see output handling all of those or going into all of those um, pattern match uh, branches. And then uh, we are classifying our dog that we call Fido and the cat with the age of 3. And uh, in theory, this code should give us the output. For Rust, it's probably interesting to note that we have to use again the qualifier for the enum animals because we are passing an enum to the function. The variant dog gets the instance. So we here we are creating a dog. In the curly braces, we set up the properties of this struct and the name gets set to a string called Fido. The cat makes this a bit easier. So we have the cat variant cat instance being instantiated with the age of three. Okay, let's check out the code. This will be fairly interesting. Okay, I'm hopping into the Python shell. At least that's my plan. And I will first show you that this is not Python that is easily available. So as you can uh, see, it is a Python uh, 3.10.0. alpha 0 coming from a branch and uh, this is like super developmental uh, stuff that you cannot easily access today. I installed uh, the official 3.10 alpha 1 and it does not have the pattern matching in it yet. So really take your time. It's now uh, mid-October. So maybe it's available when uh, this video is out or in uh, the near future. Anyways, we can uh, run this Python 3.10 pattern matching.py and uh, we get the output that we expect. The first iteration of our range is zero. So this is the handler at the very bottom that lets us match anything. Therefore, we get the word anything. Then we match one. For two, we get two or three. For three, we get two or three. Four or bigger is handled for everything that's bigger. And at the very bottom, <coughs> we get the correct output from our classify function. So the dog named with the name and the age of the cat. In theory, Rust's code matches this behavior. Let's see if that's true. So first, of course, we have to compile as always. Works fine. And we have the pattern matching and we get the same output as the code matches and is equal. Let's hop back to our Python code. I have one more example for you guys. In the last episode, I showed you the FizzBuzz game implemented to show off how closures and anonymous functions work. Now, we can see the code that we used up here in this block. And you can see that we have if, else if, and uh, this is fairly long and uh, not easy to read because all the different cases are kind of in hidden in the code right here. And the below, the same implementation. So our if bus is the old one. Using pattern matching, I can actually create a tuple of two things I wanna test. In this case, I will test the division by three and the division by five and uh, the outcome of uh, this modulo operator I can test for. So I can get the case where both divisions work out, we get our fizz bus. Then uh, in the case where only three is perfectly fine, we get our fizz and here we only have that for buzz. Then the underscore again matches any pattern. So whatever is coming out of this uh, module operator for 
x by 5 is ignored here and on the lower one uh, for the div division by 3 and then for all the other cases that haven't been matched yet we just print out the number so this handles fizzbus in a much shorter and easier readable way to match this in rust i actually don't use a nested function or in this case a on the main defined function i use a closure that matches the tuple in rust we have to use the parentheses to know, denote this is a tuple and then we have to match also with the parentheses for the same uh, cases as we do in python so we get our two zeros is fizz buzz and uh, divided by three is fizz and so on and then we run it from 1 to 24 to see if it works yeah let's just run uh, the rust version so we rust compile fizzbuzz it warns us that we are not using ifbuzz which is true but it still compiles fine and it works fine so we can see this uh, pattern matching idea gives us the perfect result we get one two fizz or buzz, fizz, 7, 8, and so on, until 15, which is uh, yielding the zeros for dividing by 3 and by 5. And we get our fizz buzz, and then it continues on with this game. Pattern matching is way more powerful. You can uh, actually write this uh, cat and dog problem with uh, deconstructing enums in a much easier way, but this way you will not have structs. I tried to match the Python code as much as I can with the Rust code, so I decided to use uh, structs. Um, then uh, deconstructing options or setting variables using those pattern matchings and uh, lots of other stuff is possible. Please read the documentation as this is a topic where we could probably talk for easy an hour. But this would also then include lots of stuff that you haven't heard about yet. So I would then also have to explain how this stuff works in Rust first before I can show the pattern matching. So we will just account to this on a regular basis on the future episodes. I realized that I forgot to mention important stuff and that the code in Rust and Python were not equivalent. So let's fix that. The thing that I forgot to mention is a really cool feature in pattern matching. It's the deconstructing of the item that comes in. So on the left, you can see in Python code that uh, the pet comes in. We match it to the case cat and then we assign age to be the pattern matching part that is important. And then we can only use the age of the cat as the argument that uh, gets spat out of this pattern matching. So it's deconstructed. I only have a variable that gives me the property of this object. And the same is done below for the dog. We only use the name here. This is the reason why the Rust code on the right is not equivalent because here I'm matching for dog and I get a full dog object passed. Then I have to use the dog object and its name so let's um, make those two codes really equivalent. Let's first deconstruct in Rust. Let's get also this stuff in the same order. Uh, we're going to take the cat and I'm going to remove now <clears throat> the original cat instance and I will now deconstruct it into the age and this means at the end of the code I can get rid of the cat instance and this code will work fine for us and now to get back onto the Rust side uh, on the Python side we will do the same but the inverse so we will keep the cat matching with the deconstructing of the a uh, to get the age but we'll get rid of oops we will get rid of 
the parentheses to only match for the case dog and then we will have to use pet to get the name so we write that we will hop over to the side we will go to our python thingy and uh, remember we are using the python 3.10 for this and this new code you can see has the same output back to uh, rust so now we can uh, rust compile the new code and we see that it works fine we get our output the way it's intended and another cool thing that i can show you in rust and this also works in python the idea is the same that's an important feature of uh, pet tag matching you can make sure that there's exhaustive matching for all of the enum variants so if i now make a comment here and uh, only match for the cat and uh, no longer for the dog i still have both variants in my enum you can see that up here we have the two animals dog and cat but here i only have my matching for the animals that <clears throat> only matches for the cat now if i go back to the shell and uh, compile this it will complain that i have uh, the pattern dog not covered now there's two options if we want to get rid of this compiler error we can of course remove this comment or as we've seen in the other pattern matching we can create an any case that reacts to any value and uh, with this we can cheat our way out of handling all enum errors and now the compiler is happy again and we can run the pattern matching the main idea of this is to use it on purpose this way you can make sure that you have for example fully implemented uh, a networking protocol because all the different message variants are covered and handled so basically the compiler will already make sure that you have handled every possible case of your incoming or outgoing uh, protocol all right that was it for the addendum i forgot about this but i think this should uh, clear things up and shows two important features of pattern matching thanks for watching coming up next on the from python to rust series are structs